I love this home, now what? Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb with the Chubb Realty Group and we're brokered by eXp. And I wanted to share with you today about the next steps in the process once you've found that home that you absolutely love and can't live without. So you've walked through the front door, it swept you off your feet, right? You've envisioned the turkey coming out of the oven and hitting the dining room table. You've looked at the beds and the baths and, and, and the square footage and ultimately what the house offers and, and it, it aligns with your life today, but as well as where you see the future of your life going. So growing into the home, right? This house is perfect for you. So what do you do as the next step in the process? Well, the first step in that process is the information gathering stage. And so what are we looking for in this information gathering stage and, and ultimately how long should it take? Well, the length question is, is you really wanna get through this stage as quickly as possible because if you end up dragging your feet a little bit, this is when another buyer might be able to swoop in and, and buy your dream home out from underneath of you or when you have to get into a competitive situation that ultimately might make you pay more for the house than you really wanted to. So the first step of this information gathering phase is going back. At this point, you should have already been pre-approved, so we need to go back and look at that pre-approval. Make sure that it hasn't expired, but also that the price of the home lines up with the amount that we're pre-approved for. Now keep in mind, depending which offer strategy that we put in place, we might need a couple different pre-approval numbers. Right, So keep that in mind that we're going to talk about offer strategy throughout this process and ultimately what we're trying to accomplish. So. If you're not looking to pre, you know, use financing in order to buy your house and, and you're planning on paying cash, then that's perfect, that's great. We're gonna need a proof of funds, um, which is basically a bank statement or statements or a letter from your banker verifying that you have the funds. So we have something that proves our ability in order to buy the house. The next step is, is we're gonna to wanna to look at comps, otherwise known as comparables. And basically we're looking to make sure that the house is not way overpriced for the neighborhood and we're looking at how many beds and baths and, and, and our average square footage around the square footage and other houses that have sold that are that are close to that as well as similar condition we want to make sure that we're not overpaying for the house because if you end up getting an accepted offer and that offer is way above what the neighborhood supports, then you're gonna have appraisal issues and that's a whole mess that we don't wanna to try to go down as, 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 as much as possible. So, so we figured out what the house is worth. You figured out how much you, you wanna pay for the house, okay? So ultimately now it's time to put pen, and pay, pen to paper. So we're gonna first jump on the phone and we're gonna talk about an offer price, okay? Ultimately, how much are you willing to pay for the house and creating that strategy in order to get to that number and hopefully better than that number, quite frankly. So we figured out that, now we're gonna talk about deposits, okay? Ultimately, the deposit is what keeps our feet to the fire, right? And so how much is are the deposits will we need? And, ultimately, and are you comfortable with that number? And then what's the process in paying the deposits? For example, the first one is due when the offer is accepted, and the second one generally comes two to three weeks later. So we're gonna talk about the deposits in great detail, and then we're gonna go into closing date. We wanna make sure that the closing date aligns with what works in your life, right? So if, if your, your lease is up on the 31st of the month and, and, and your closing is on the second of the month, that's probably not gonna to go too well. So we need to talk about these issues up front versus what, you know, a week before closing. Okay, so we've got offer price, we've got deposits, we've talked about closing date. What about home inspection, right? So are you planning on doing a home inspection? We always, quite frankly, recommend it. You should always know what's going on in the house. And, and also home inspections can really act as basically an instruction manual, a how-to of what's going on in the house. Um, we're also gonna talk about contingencies. So what's a contingency? Well, think about contingency. Say if, say if you have a house to sell, but you're looking to buy another one, right? Well, say if you have to sell that house before you buy this other one, that's a home sale contingency that we might wanna put in the offer, or maybe appraisal language contingencies that we'll put in the offer. So we'll talk about contingencies in, in pretty great depth. And then also inclusion. So, you know, do we want the washer and dryer and the refrigerator included with this offer price? And, and heck, maybe even a table that fits a room absolutely perfectly and, and you really want it. So we're gonna talk about inclusions as well. So. We've gotten everything, we've, we've, we've written up the offer. We're gonna send it over to you just for your review. We're gonna talk about it in great detail. We're gonna jump on the phone, make sure all of your questions are answered. Um, and then ultimately when you feel comfortable, comfortable you know, with the offer, that's when we're gonna submit it to the seller. And we're gonna submit it with all that 
information, all those supporting documents we talked beforehand. So your pre-approval or proof of funds, as well as obviously the sign letter, and even the comparables that we've worked up if we feel that the house is priced greatly above, or you know, is, that the sellers are asking a lot more than the neighborhood supports, we're gonna to wanna to show them what we're looking at and why and justify essentially our offer price. So we submit the offer, this is ultimately the hard part. This is the waiting part. You know, will the seller accept our offer? Are they gonna reject it? You know, are they gonna counter or, <laughs> really the three worst words to a buyer's ears is, we are now in a multiple offer situation, right? That's like a dagger to the heart that, hey, it's not over yet, but we're gonna have to give our best and final offer and, and ultimately we might end up paying a little bit more for the home than we than we were anticipating. So, so great, now the offer is accepted. Well, there's a whole lot, lot more steps in the process, but don't worry, that's what we're here for. We're gonna walk you through those steps in the process so it never feels like you're kind of wandering out there and, and transaction land all by yourself. Again, my name is Jeff Chubb. I'm with the Chubb Realty Group and we're brokered by eXp Realty. Should you have any questions about the real estate process, whether it be buying a house or selling a house, whatever it might be, we, we look forward to being your resource and answering any and all of your questions to get you comfortable. Um, the best number to reach me at is 617-480-2600, or you can get me by email at jeff at boston2.com. Thanks for watching. Look forward to chatting with you soon and hope you're having a great day.